The Xbox One controller is a great and popular peripheral that many PC gamers choose to use alongside their keyboard and mouse when playing a wide variety of games. For certain games such as racing and fighting games, a controller is preferable, or if you want to have a couch gaming setup, it's just more comfortable. However, there is a major problem that's been plaguing these controllers when using them in Bluetooth mode. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. A while back I saw a video from another tech channel called Tech Illiterate. I'll have a link to his channel down below. I highly recommend checking it out. He has made a bunch of cool and informative videos that I think you guys will like. Now in this video that's called Xbox Controller is Robbing Your FPS, he shows that while using the Xbox One controller with his PC paired via Bluetooth, it was actually causing some performance issues. He used Rocket League as an example and you could see some fluctuations and dips with his performance. And then when he had switched to the official Xbox Xbox wireless dongle for PC, the problem went away. Seeing this really intrigued me and I remember telling myself that I have to test this out on my system at some point. As someone who games a lot on a 4K OLED TV and uses wireless peripherals connected via Bluetooth, such as an Xbox One and Xbox Series controller, I want to know am I losing or sacrificing performance when using my controller wirelessly? I've used my Xbox controller wirelessly with my PCs using Bluetooth for various games and for the most part I haven't really noticed any sort of weird performance issues while gaming so I'm not gonna lie when I first saw that video I was quite skeptical of it. However just because I didn't experience any sort of problems doesn't mean that the problem doesn't exist. There have been multiple threads from various forums posted on the internet over the past few years. Even Microsoft's own official forums had people complaining about the performance issues when using these controllers via Bluetooth. I've also seen many similar threads posted on Reddit as well. Xbox One controller causing performance loss. My Xbox One controller is affecting my frame rate. I'm getting stuttering when using my Xbox One controller. Someone even showed this weird behavior being exhibited when they were playing Farming Simulator, and you can see their frame rate taking a huge hit. So obviously something strange is happening here, and this is what prompted me into diving into the matter and conduct my own tests. To test this, we'll be using my test rig which has the following specs. For the CPU, we've got an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X which is cooled by a Corsair H115i XT Pro AIO liquid cooler. Paired with 4 8GB sticks of Patriot Viper steel memory running at 3600MHz CL14. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify and what's important to note here is that this motherboard has integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. The chip it uses is Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX200 which as the name implies supports Wi-Fi 6 and supports Bluetooth 5.1. The GPU is an ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090. For our storage device, we've got a Samsung 970 EVO Plus M.2 NVMe SSD, and powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3 power supply. The testing methodology is pretty simple and straightforward. I benchmarked a few games using the controller plugged in via micro USB, and then I ran the benchmarks again with the controller paired to the PC via Bluetooth. The first game we'll check out is Rocket League, as this was the game that Tech Illiterate has used to test out the performance of their controller and Bluetooth mode. So first up, we'll take a look at performance when using the controller wired to establish a baseline of the performance that we can expect. From the system, the frame rate is ridiculously high. We're playing at 1440p with performance quality settings and with extra post-processing options like motion blur and blooming effects turned off. As you guys can see, the performance is absolutely buttery smooth here. The frame rate stays nice and high and the frame times are low and consistent. Wow, I've actually never played Rocket League on a new current gen, uh, graphics card. Last time I played was using my 1800X and 1080 Ti, but with a 5800X and 3090, the numbers here are just insane. So with the controller plugged in, we attain an average frame rate of 839 FPS, 631 for the 1% lows, and 172 for the 0.1% lows. I'm sure nobody would be complaining about these figures. Also, let's take a look at our frame time graph to get a sense of how consistent the gameplay was. When looking at frame time charts, you want lower figures, but consistency is best. Now overall, the performance scene here is pretty smooth and consistent. There are a few spikes here or there, but they aren't anything too drastic, and it wasn't anything noticeable. With the controller hardwired, everything is as you'd expect it to be. 
Alright, so now let's take a look at our performance when using the controller via Bluetooth. When using the controller wirelessly, something is definitely wrong. You guys can see here that even though the frame rate is high, it's not as high as it was before and there are some weird hitches and stuttering occurring quite frequently. There's also quite a lot of variance in the frame rate and it's just not as consistent as before. With Bluetooth, we attained an average FPS of 647, so that's quite a significant drop. Our 1% lows got absolutely decimated and so did our 0.1% percent lows. This is just absolutely terrible, and I can't believe just how badly performance has been negatively impacted. Nothing changed except for the fact that we're using the controller wirelessly. You think that the method you're using to connect your controller would have nothing to do with your game's performance, so it's just bizarre to see this happening and as for why this is happening, I don't know exactly. Taking a look at our frame time graphs shows us just how inconsistent the gameplay was and there were many moments where there was drastic frame time spikes which was seriously distracting and unwanted in a title like this when you're going to be playing competitively. Moving on, let's check out another title to see if the problem persists with other games. Here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're playing at 1440p with the Ultra preset, RTX is off, and... As I'm running through the village of Kowaku, performance is generally pretty nice and stable. We attained an average frame rate of 156 FPS, 125 1% lows, and 89 for the 0.1% lows. Can't complain there, for an adventure title like this, that is more than enough performance. Our frame time chart also shows us that performance is consistent as well. There were a few hiccups here and there, but it wasn't anything too drastic, and there weren't that many spikes happening either. Now, moving on to gameplay with the Xbox One controller connected via Bluetooth, and we can see that the performance has once again taken a significant hit. You will also notice that the frame time monitoring isn't as smooth and consistent as it was before, and there was quite a bit of micro stuttering that was occurring. Comparing that performance to before, we can see that for all three measured stats, we're again looking at significant reduction in performance. Our average frame rate dropped by 16% to 131 FPS, our 1% lows dropped by nearly 50%, and our 0.1% lows dropped by a similar margin. Our frame time graph also shows us some very inconsistent behavior with respect to deliverance of frames. This is related to the micro stuttering that I was noticing earlier when I was playing the game. It really is quite an interesting situation that this is being caused by a Bluetooth peripheral. So if you've used your Xbox One S controller wirelessly and opt to use Bluetooth, and you've experienced terrible performance issues and stuttering, it's probably because of this. Let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077. I didn't bother with recording any gameplay or logging any sort of frame times because this game actually showed us no performance degradation when using the controller via Bluetooth. Here I tested the game at 1440p with a mixture of high and ultra settings, with ray tracing on Psycho, DLSS set to quality. We attained an average frame rate of 68 FPS, 54 1% lows for both configs, and we see a slight difference in the 0.1% lows, but that's within margin of error and could be attributed to really anything since this is an open world title with procedural generation. However, what's important to note here is that unlike the previous two titles we looked at, this game remains unaffected regardless of what method we use to connect a controller. So hey, I guess that's a good thing. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3, and just like Cyberpunk 2077, we're seeing pretty much identical performance between the two configurations. There's really not much else to say here, I am glad though that we have another title which fortunately isn't affected by the method you're using to connect to your controller, although this just opens up more questions now. Why are some games affected, and why aren't some affected as much as the others? Moving on, we have Hitman 2, and here we can see a drastic difference when it comes to performance when using the controller via USB versus Bluetooth. Plugged in via USB, the performance is very smooth, can't complain there. It was very smooth and consistent, but then all of a sudden, Bluetooth just seems to destroy all that smooth performance we had earlier. It was hilariously bad, the stuttering was just awful, and it was just straight up unplayable. You can take a look at our 1% and 0.1% lows, and they've dropped significantly compared to the using the controller wired via USB. This really shouldn't be happening. Performance dips this bad all because we decided to use Bluetooth for our controller. That's honestly unacceptable. The last game we'll take a look at is Forza Horizon 4. Now, it would be quite hysterical if one of Microsoft's own first-party games exhibited this weird behavior as well, but fortunately that doesn't happen. Whether the controller was connected via Bluetooth or plugged in via USB, performance was pretty much identical. Forza Horizon 4 was a game that I played a lot with my Xbox One S controller using Bluetooth, and I never noticed any issues with respect to performance, so that was one of the reasons why I was skeptical that how could a controller negatively impact performance like that, but as we just saw, it really depends on the game you're playing. 
Now I've looked online for some answers and unfortunately I couldn't find anything nor could I narrow down why this is a problem occurring on my own. Generally, the solutions I've seen online from various forums are people suggesting that they either buy the official Microsoft USB dongle for PC or just suck it up and plug in the controller with a cable. At first, I thought that perhaps it was a problem with the wireless Intel chip that this motherboard has, and so I plugged in my Aventry DG40S USB Bluetooth dongle that I did a mini review of a few years back when I was using a PC that had no onboard Bluetooth and I wanted to use my Switch controller. But unfortunately, the problem still persisted and performance was terrible for games that were affected by this problem to begin with, but at least we now know that it wasn't the Intel Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip. The other thing I tried was updating the controller using Microsoft's Xbox Accessories app from the Windows Store. That didn't make a difference for me either. At this point, this really seems like a problem that nobody has the real solution to. Everyone is suggesting workarounds. The official Xbox wireless USB dongle is only about $30 Canadian and I believe it's about $25 US and I'm honestly thinking about just caving in and grabbing one because I don't want to lose performance and experience stutters and I want to be able to use my controller wirelessly. But it's just a shame that this is Microsoft's own product that's having issues with their own OS. So you have to fork over more money to Get it, get it working the way it should. Why is it that my PS4 and Nintendo Switch Pro controller never gave me these problems? Now, one last thing I wanted to try was using the new Xbox Series X or S controller. I ended up impulse buying this blue controller late last year when I was at my local electronics retailer. I was like, hey, that's an awesome color. That was literally it. I didn't even actually care too much for the fact that it was the new controller that had some minor upgrades. It really only had to do with the fact that I just really liked that color. Though this whole situation prompted me into testing this controller as well, and I thought, would this one also result in poor performance? Taking a look at our Shadow of the Tomb Raider results, and well well well, what a pleasant surprise. There's no performance difference between using the Xbox Series controller via Bluetooth and when we had used the Xbox One controller wired. The whole experience was pretty much the same and there wasn't any sort of weird stuttering either. I also tested Hitman 2 which was the other title that showed us some terrible behavior and just had some awful stuttering and I'm happy to report that the Xbox Series controller doesn't negatively impact performance here either. So whatever the problem was with the Xbox One controller, it doesn't seem to be affecting the Xbox Series controller, so that's great news. For those of you who are using the nearest Series controller, you can rest easy knowing that your controller isn't robbing you of your FPS. If you're a PC gamer and you were wondering why you might have been getting weird lag, stuttering, or lower performance, it might have been because you were using your controller connected via Bluetooth. If you're looking at using the controller wirelessly, then I suggest picking up the official dongle, or perhaps picking up a new Xbox Series controller if yours is old and worn out. Might be time to pick up a new one instead. I'll have links to those options down below if you're interested. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.